Hey Google, lights, camera, action. <laughs> Hello and welcome Bobs and Bros. This week, Max has a really, really dope setup. Oh, sorry. Skunk, skunkiness in beer. We're talking about skunkiness in beer. Another off flavor 101. Yes. For an open window on a crappy world, Max and Chris from Ups and All right, so skunkiness in beer. It's something, uh, well, it's part of uh, the off-flavor series that we kind of started because people are, are a little interested in, in that side of beer as well. Uh, skunkiness is very, very common, a lot more common than you would expect. Uh, it's in most beers that are outside. If you have a beer on the patio, it's probably gonna turn out skunky pretty fast, unless you have some sort of glass that, that is not made out of glass uh, kind of concept, if you have like a wooden bug or something. But it, it, it's there, uh... and it's also there in a lot of uh, other glass containers. Beer's perfect until it hits packaging. That's where it, it hits the fan and then there's a lot of, of things that can go wrong such as skunkiness. Now Chris, where does skunkiness come from? Uh, the first kind of like skunk uh, reminiscence or uh, dints that we got is when I guess the BGCP guidelines started putting out uh, skunk out there as an off flavor because people got into those import lagers like Heineken, Corona, <laughs> uh, Stella Artois, which are all stored in green or clear bottles. At first, it sounds great, nice, delicious, light lagers, easy to drink, and all that. Until you put them outside, they eat the, the light, and then skunk comes to play. Beer warms up, turns as really bad. There's really weird legends on the fact that Heineken uh, wants you to put a lime in the beer because it masks off the skunk flavor that's coming kind of like naturally from the beer. Is it Heineken or Corona? I'm not sure. What? Heineken or Corona? Corona. Okay. Did I say Heineken? Uh, you said Heineken. That's why I'm like, oh, Heineken's shit. never said that. <laughs> I guess it would probably help mask off the skunk. I just don't like Heineken too. It's just, they yeah, all it's, tend it... to have that kind of like, Ah, uh, it's it's the kind it of thing where right. when it started getting imported in in America, uh, people associated the skunkiness in the beer to a higher class of beer. They actually they actually translated skunkiness to mean a better beer, an imported product, and actually started liking those flavors, liking those aromas, uh, which is kind of weird, because uh, they would never have accepted that from any breweries in America, but because it was from Europe, uh, it yep. was now deemed acceptable not only acceptable, but a key feature to those styles. Uh, yeah. And you're right, the BGCP kind of cleared the water saying, no, it's not supposed to be like that. Uh, yep. Now, European brewers actually knew this. They knew their beer was getting skunky, uh, so, so they, they stopped uh, the production of skunky beers using a couple different methods. methods. The, the biggest one is using uh, pre-isomerized hops. Uh, so the skunkiness comes directly from the hop. UV will affect negatively uh, and molecularly the hop and create those skunky off flavors. Now there's a couple of different ways to avoid it, uh, as I said with pre-osomerized uh, alpha acids. So say you use the um, uh, lupulin extract, you, you're going to limit the amount of skunkiness that's going to be there okay. in the future. It's kind of the isomerization that, that, that creates the possibility of UV affecting it. Uh, now. There's a couple different hops that you can use. Uh, they're usually prefixed with Rho, Tetra, or Hexa, Iso, Humulone. Uh, it's kind of the three um, three key characters. Very hard words to say. <laughs> three very hard words to say. I'm actually surprised that I remember them. Uh, you nailed them. The only word I remember from that study is the um, chemical reaction happening with the, the hops in there. That's called MTB. Where it's yeah. like 
a word that long. I can't, I can't remember the whole thing, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I wasn't going to get into that because I can't remember those words, and I, I don't know exactly the process, I just know that molecularly the, the hop gets changed and, and creates that skunky flavor. But if you have those specific hops that are bred and created, they're not bred, they're actually man-made, to not have the chance of creating skunky beers, well, you add them in your beer, in your clear bottle, and you won't get a skunky beer. Which is great! Okay. It's awesome! That's what you want! Yeah. Unless yeah, but, uh, you've trained a population to actually actively look for that skunkiness in the beer, then and put you start lime the, into it so you won't taste it. Is you start you losing sales because people want that skunkiness. They're actually looking for it, and they're not finding any more because you found a solution against it. Uh, so companies actually had to revert this and intentionally add skunkiness to their beers. It's crazy. Wow. I mean, who would have thought? Now, um, a green bottle looks awesome. Clear bottle looks awesome. But they do affect your beer in a very negative way because they, they, they don't yep. protect against UV at all. That's why brown yep. bottles are very popular to protect to, uh, I think, up to 99% or 97%, a very high percentage. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not perfect, but they, no. do, they do the job properly. But one oh, thing yeah. I want to mention real quick, like there's a lot of really great Belgian brewers, Lambic brewers are still using green bottles. And... I, I didn't really realize it until I did the research for that uh, specific subject. Like, we always blame Corona, Heineken, Stade Artois for the skunkiness in their beers, but I never got a Belgian beer in a green bottle that was skunked. And I, I'm, I'm trying to understand the whole thing. So are you talking about, uh, like, Saison from Belgium or talking about Landix yeah. and Goose? Uh, saison, saison. Let's saison? go with saison. It's a bit easier, yeah. Oh, it's, it's a good question. I'm, I'm not actually sure about that. I have to check. Um, yeah. If you were talking about lambics and, and stuff like that, one of the reasons is because you, your um, your bread and your wild yeast is actually going to help prevent skunkiness. They're, okay. they're they're going to eat the hops in a different way, and they're going to do their own little thing. It's very complex. Um, huh. But yeah, for saisons. I don't know, man. Uh, they probably, probably use raw train. hops. They probably use a hop that does not uh, contain uh, the possibility of getting UV affect your beer. That's the only logical thing that I could think of. Uh, like yeah. Same thing with uh, Steam Whistle. I, I believe Steam Whistle uses raw or Tetra or Hexa, whatever hops, because uh, okay. they have green bottles and you rarely get skunkiness from the bottle directly. So, I mean, the answer is probably that. They probably already use hops that are pre-osomerized so you don't get that, that skunkiness in them. Okay, I, it answers a lot of questions. And um, one thing also I wanted to point it out, like Newcastle, their brown ale is in a clear bottle. Mm -hmm. And it's not a beer that I got skunkiness out of it too. So is uh, your malt profile in the beer kind of like helping the fact that the hops in there won't skunk out? No. Or it's just it's, the hops? It's 100% the priority. hops. So again, Newcastle, same thing with Sleeman and here in Canada. They, they, they know that they have clear bottles, so they've put steps in place to avoid getting skunkiness from those bottles. You'll also realize okay. um, uh, Corona, for a while, had their bottles in, in cases, which was one of the, the tricks they had to avoid um, to avoid skunkiness in their beers. They had, they had covered cases. It wasn't, it, it wasn't six packs, it was always covered. Uh, they also okay. had a big problem when they switched to cans because the beer weren't skunky in the cans. They were, they were fresh and they weren't affected by the light. Um, and uh, th That's just sad. Yeah, so they had to skunk the beers before they canned them because if not, they wouldn't have the same flavor profile. Uh, oh. So it, it's 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 a weird predicament that some brewers put themselves in when they start uh, habituating uh, a population to a certain off flavor in their beers. Uh, same thing as if a brewery had a lot of DMS in their beers, and then from uh, one day to the, the next, they decide to do a 90 minute boil or 120 minute, and they they get rid of all that DMS. People are going to go like, hey, this beer doesn't taste the same. You know, no, it doesn't taste the same. It tastes better. You know, it, it tastes like it should taste. It would actually taste better. It's it's impressive how getting to know your off flavors really helps you understanding the brewing process, but also the different challenges that every brewer or brewery faces every single time they're taking their beer from the straight up fermenter to kegs or cans and trying to put it that out 
uh, on the shelves and even uh, that's something that the BGCP uh, and Cicerones are um, asking before the sensory exam is to put a couple of Coronas or Heineken outside for one or three days to make it skunky like the skunkiest it can be so you can easily detect that off flavor in yeah. your own beer. So yeah, if you want to try that at home. It's one of the easiest uh, off flavors to actually get in your beer and to identify uh, skunkiness. It's, it's, it's one of the most common ones. Uh, I know we talked about the acetal and DMS, but no, skunkiness is the most common one. Um, and, and again, for some people, it's, it's a good flavor for some reason. I don't know. It's, you know, Everyone I'm has just, their own. Yeah. I, I don't like it. No, it is what it is. Uh, there's a, yeah, there's other great laggers out there, really good laggers out there. So just don't look out for Heineken or or um, Corona. I'm, I'm totally not into those beers. That's fair. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> it's my hey, little rant. That's fair. Anything else to add? Oh. oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm super ranty, but I think I learned a lot from this subject from you giving out the fantastic words but also the science behind off flavors in general it's it's very dope very dope so if you like this video please leave a like subscribe share with your friends and let us know in the comments below what kind of 101 you would like to see next uh and we'll see you in the next video i'm out of beer so i need to run for a new one well Yay. cheers Oh, nice grisette, Max. I wonder Thank if you. it's the one you made. It is. Looking good. It's pretty good. Hey, Google. <laughs> Done filming.